So this is 5.2, part two, diagonalization. We're gonna start off with a definition. So if we have two square matrices, A and B, A and B are similar if there exists an invertible matrix P such that B equals P inverse AP. Similar matrices will come up again in this book, but for now, we just need to know that similar matrices have the same eigenvalues. So to simplify this, we're gonna choose B to be a diagonal matrix D, where D is gonna be our diagonal of eigenvalues of A. So we will have to have N eigenvalues, but you can see in choosing P, we are going to have to have a P that's invertible because, of course, we need its inverse. So here's a definition. So a square matrix is diagonalizable if there exists a matrix D and an invertible matrix P such that D is equal to P inverse AP. So that's just the, the similar definition, except that our B is our diagonal, like we said we're gonna do. And do notice if I left multiply by P, so you can see here, I'm gonna left multiply by P, left multiply by P, and I get PD equals AP, because these cancel out. And so that's what we get. And then I could right multiply by P inverse, I get this. We can see if I right multiply by P inverse, right multiply by P inverse, these turn to I, and I get A equals PD, P inverse, okay? So to make this happen, we just make D, my eigenvalues along the diagonal, and we make P by putting in the eigenvectors. So this is diagonalizable if P inverse exists. So P inverse exists if there are N independent eigenvectors. There is a theorem. So there is a theorem that says if there are N distinct, there are N distinct eigenvalues, it will result in N distinct, distinct eigenvectors, which are independent. So really, So we will need n independent eigenvectors in order to diagonalize A. So from this theorem, one way to get that is if we have n distinct eigenvalues. That will result in n distinct eigenvectors, which are independent. So what happens in the case that there are less than n distinct eigenvalues? Well, two things can happen. So once again, if an n by n matrix has less than n distinct eigenvalues, then two things can happen. They're just the two obvious things. Either it results in n distinct eigenvectors, or it results in less than. It can result in n distinct eigenvectors, or not, is really what it says. If it results in n distinct eigenvectors, then the inverse exists and A is diagonalizable. But if it results in less than N distinct eigenvectors, it's not diagonalizable. Let's do an example. Okay, so we're gonna try to diagonalize 
this matrix A. And here's the steps to diagonalize. So first, we need to find the eigenstuff, all the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors of A. And then we're going to form P and D. Remember, D is the diagonal of eigenvalues, and P has the corresponding eigenvectors. Then we're going to find P inverse, and then we're going to check that A can be diagonalized. And it's easier to check with when you're multiplying three matrices if we use the diagonal here in the middle, because there's a lot more zeros to multiply. Because then we'll be multiplying these two and then P inverse. So let's do it. Let's find our eigenstuff, eigenvalues first. So our eigenvalues are in 1 and 2, and so I've made my diagonal matrix. So now let's find the corresponding eigenvectors. Plugging 1 in for lambda. We're solving the null space. I can augment it. I can see that these are multiples of each other, so that will zero out. And then we take half row one to row one. Translate our first row. So if you got one, negative one, you're gonna, that's the same thing. It's just the bases. And now let's do our second eigenvector. Plugging 2 into here, 3 minus 2. Again, I can see these are multiples of each other. So the second row will zero out. There's no more reducing, so we translate. You can set y equals to t or x equals t, it doesn't matter. So now we have our P. Now we have to be careful here. We can choose the diagonal any way we want. But once we've chosen our diagonal, my first column has lambda equals 1. So you have to use the vector that corresponds to lambda equals 1 in the first column of P. So this one must be 1 minus 1, 1. And so the other one, for eigenvector 2, we have to use the same column for eigenvalue 2. So you do use columns. And let's box that. So now we're going to, on our steps, we formed P and D. Now we have to find P inverse. So I'm going to zero this out first. I think I'm also at the same time going to go minus row one to row one. Zero that out. And similarly, minus row two to row two. So to make sure we have the correct matrices and that this actually works, we're going to check. So P, D, P inverse we just found. I'm going to multiply these two. We get a 2 by 2. Of course, that goes there. Multiply these two. And yeah, make sure you check it and just don't write A, but yeah, that's this is A, 
And so we have checked it. Here's a cool result that we can use for diagonal matrices. So we're just taking the third power of each side. I'll write this out three times. We can regroup. I just dropped the parentheses. I'm going to regroup these. You can see this is going to be I, the D there, this is I. So this is our result. A to the third is P, D to the third, P inverse. And we can pretty easily see, I could have just shown pretty easily A to the K with the same reasoning. So if you recall, we have from the last video, the eigenvalues of a to the k are lambda to the k. So here, the eigenvalues are lambda to the k, which means these have to be, d to the k have to have the same eigenvalues because they're similar. It's diagonal with lambda 1, lambda 2, we can have all the way to lambda n. To the kth value, we have zeros all everywhere else. d to the k have to have lambda k, the last video too. That's how we take a power of a diagonal. Pretty cool, huh? Because last video, the eigenvalues have to be along the diagonal. Let's do an example. So I'm using the above example so I don't have to go through and find D and P again. So our result is our D, one, zero, zero, two, and our P, minus one. That one, three there. So let's multiply these two. So there's my a to the third. And now we're going to check. So we're going to check by actually multiplying a to the third, like so. You want to make sure you're doing all this multiplication yourself and not typing it in because you need to be fast at multiplying in order to do well on the exam to at a reasonable pace. We're going to multiply those two. Second row, minus six. And I'm sure I'm going to get minus 7 there. But you should check it. Dot product those two. And they match. And that's it for today.